everyone. My name is Ryan Houck, and I'm the Director of Sales for Western Leisure Tours. Um, before we get started here, I can tell you guys, please feel free to interrupt me at any point in time with any questions you may have. Um, you know, I, I have my main bullet points that I'll kind of go over with you guys on, on all the attractions that we'll be going through. Um, but yeah, please feel free to interject, ask questions, make more of a discussion if you'd like. No problem at all there. So just to tell you guys a little bit, or go ahead. Did you say something, John? No? Okay. Um, so just tell you guys a little bit more about us. Uh, this year, we are actually celebrating 42 years of business, which makes us the oldest full-service custom tour operator in the Western U.S. We're known for designing personalized group tours that are customized to satisfy not only your guys' interests, but hopefully also your budgets as well. We've been working with Denise and Grandview Tours now for the last few years to help create experiences to let you guys enjoy the national parks. We developed the best routing and timing to get the most out of your trip out west. And we really just try to take the guesswork out of the best places to stay and things to do while we're in the area. So, so far we have two different tours planned with Denise, uh, including one tour in January that's called Winter in Yellowstone by Snow Coach. Um, so this tour really is kind of a once in a lifetime type of experience that I think everybody online today would, would really enjoy. Um, what's neat about it is you get to enjoy our nation's first national park, but you get to do it without the crowds you can do it with the views that only winter really can provide. And the best part is the cost is only about half to two thirds of the cost of going in the summertime. Um, and what's also really nice about it is you get to see the entire park from the heated comfort of our snow coaches, uh, in which you get to see wildlife like buffalo and elk and moose, swans, eagles. Basically, you get to see everything that you can see in the summertime, um, except for the bears, because they're uh, uh, hibernating at that point in time, obviously. Um, so you also get to visit some of the main attractions there in the park, like Old Faithful, uh, the bubbling paint pots, and so many other geysers that shoot boiling water well over 100 feet, you know, into the winter air. Uh, we'll also do a lot of stuff outside the park as well. So we'll do a tranquil sleigh ride through the National Elk Refuge. Um, you'll learn all about how they've grown the elk population since 1912. We'll spend lots of time, of course, in beautiful Jackson Hole, Wyoming, so you guys can kind of experience what, what the whole buzz is about over in, over in that area and kind of see why so many celebrity, celebrities seem to be flocking to that area. And it really is just a really fun tour to go on. So the second tour that we have planned, of course, is the one that we'll be talking about today, which is Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta. So to give you guys a little background on, on the Balloon Fiesta, so the Balloon Fiesta started all the way back in 1972. And it was just with 13 balloons taking lift off. Fast forward to today, there's now thousands of people that come from all over the world to fly and view the balloons uh, that take off for the week and a half event. Because of COVID, um, the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta was actually canceled for the first time ever last year in, uh, in 49 years. So the, uh, it made the event even more popular this year than ever before. It'll be popular, very popular this year as well as next year. So I could tell you if you guys tried to go there yourself just based off experience, the hotels are going to be completely booked right now. Attractions are completely booked solid. And really the best way to see the Balloon Fiesta is with an operator um, just like Denise. So uh, even, even in normal times, not even post-COVID times, it's always been the best way to see Balloon Fiesta. And through this uh, description of this tour, I think you'll see why. Mm -hmm. um, so even uh, on top of the event, um, there's also a ton to do while you're in the area and other events that are going on um, while Balloon Fiesta is going on. So I think we've taken care of a lot of these things in our tour that we have planned for you guys this fall. So. <laughs> Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started, Denise, on what this tour is going to include for you all. If you want to click through to the next slides there. So, yeah, the tour will, will take off on October 7th. Um, it's a six-day tour with you guys taking off on the sixth day. And, um, yeah, lots included. So, yeah, go ahead and go to that next one, Denise, and we'll get started here. So on your first day, you all will take off uh, out of Delaware, and you'll arrive at the Albuquerque International Sunport uh, in the afternoon. Once you guys arrive, we'll have our Western Leisure Guide there to greet you and transport everybody to the beautiful hotel, which is going to be the Hyatt Place in Uptown. Um, so the hotel that we're staying at is about only 100 feet away from the Uptown District, which is an area right in the heart of the city's modern shopping and business district. 
Here, there's tons of shopping, there's restaurants, and other and tons of other local businesses for you guys to enjoy there. And like I said, it's literally about 100 feet from your front door of your hotel. So tonight, after you guys get all checked in, you have a chance to get freshened up for the night. Um, tonight, we're going to start the tour off with an amazing, authentic Mexican dinner at a place called El Pinto. If you want to go to the next slide there, Denise, I kind of have a few pictures for you. Um, usually when we arrive, they have hatch green, uh, hatch green chilies roasting outside as you enter into the restaurant, filling the air with what I call the official smell of New Mexico. Um, I lived in New Mexico for quite a while and hatch green chilies roasting. I mean, that is the smell of New Mexico. No one else has that. And it, it's intoxicating. It gets you hungry and gets you ready to go. Um, once everyone is seated, we'll enjoy house made chips and salsa. There's going to be a very large spread for our main course. There's fresh sopapillas. There'll be a unique dessert. And I promise you, by the time everybody leaves, you will be completely stuffed to the gills. They do not short us on food at all when we are there. Uh, another cool part about the restaurant is they have a whole side of their menu that's de dedicated to margaritas. So if that is your thing, you will not run out of options for that as well. Uh, they do a great job for us every single time we go there, and it's kind of the, the perfect spot for us to start off our New Mexican uh, uh, trip there. And that's the way we're going to end day one. So for day two, our first stop is going to be the Indian Pueblo Cultural Center. Um, so this museum is actually owned and operated by the 19 Pueblos of New Mexico. So everything there is very authentic, and it really kind of gives you a backstage pass into what their culture is like. Um, the museum has a rotating display of art and exhibits to view, as well as a series of exhibits that include a timeline of the Pueblo people. So um, even when we go there every year, it's almost like a brand new museum because all the exhibits, uh, or most of them are in constant rotation there. So it's always new stuff for us to look at. Last time I was there, the art gala included some really amazing hand-carved statues and some really unique uh, pottery that the Puebloans are, are known for there. The museum also circles around a really cool outside area that holds Native American dancing all weekend long, and they also have different tribal ceremonies as well. So you can see right there in the picture on the left-hand side what that kind of looks like. There's drums, there's dancing, and it's all representative of their culture there. Around that circle that you're looking at, there's also handmade Pueblo pottery that's available for purchase, and typically the people that are selling it are the actual artists themselves. And depending on the size of pottery, it is always very affordable. And, um, you know, the Pueblo and people, like I said before, they're, they're known for their interesting pottery, not just the, the cool shapes that they make, but also the very detailed paintings that they have on them. So that'll be our first stop for day two. Later on in the morning, we're going to take a drive to historic Albuquerque's Old Town, which is a historic 10 block area full of adobe buildings, live music, and of course the San Felipe uh, Denary Church, which is the oldest building in the city, which was built all the way back in 1973. So once we arrive here, we're going to have plenty of suggestions for you guys on how to spend your time, but ultimately it's going to be all up to you. There's so many amazing restaurants. There's lots of places to shop. And there's things that are just uniquely Mexico, like the decor there that you want to see when you come to an area like this. So we'll probably spend about an hour and a half to two hours in Old Town. Um, this area was not meant for motor coaches to go through, and actually even a car can't even fit on the roads here. So we'll drop you off right at the beginning. Um, and then after that, it's all walking only. So there's no cars you need to worry about. It's very flat. It's very easy to get to everything. And um, it's just a really good time. It's kind of quintessential New Mexico. It's, it's the type of stuff that you really, really want to see when you come to this area. So after that, tonight, uh, we will get to experience one of the most exciting events for the entire tour, uh, which is the Afterglow event. So uh, we'll head to the balloon grounds. And once we arrive, you guys will have plenty of time to walk around. And right when you walk in, there's going to be tons and tons of tents that are selling all sorts of Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta goodies and memorabilia. As a motor coach group, we get front row parking. So you'll see people walking literally from miles away to get to the Balloon Fiesta grounds. We are right there in the front row. The second you step off the bus, it's three more steps and you're on the ground. So um, once again, motor coach is the way to go for this event. Um, so you also get to enjoy dinner uh, that's going to be included at an area called the Chasers Club. This is kind of a semi-private area that the general public is not allowed access to, and you guys have access to it the entire time. So not only do you get access to the Chasers Club and the dinner that's served in there, but you'll also have access to the tinted area as well that has some nice cookies, and it's just a nice covered area that you guys can hang out in. Um, 
So after dinner, to start the event off, you guys will get to see the Team Fast Track Skydivers drop from the sky, which is the official starting of the Afterglow event. So they come down in kind of a spiral motion. They have fireworks attached to their heels, and it really is a spectacle. They do a great job every time I've seen them. And like I said, that really starts the event off for us. Um, immediately after that, you guys did experience what usually ends up being everyone's favorite event, which of course is the Special Shapes Glodio. So here you guys get to see Special Shapes light up basically like huge Christmas ornaments. And all the balloonists, uh, or I'm sorry, a lot of the balloonists will actually even use special gas uh, to make them burn even brighter as they light up the grounds. Initially, this event took place to just basically say, you know, a big thank you to the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta um, facility and staff for putting on such a good event. And that's still the motive behind it, but it's gotten so large and so grand, it's become an event on its own, essentially. So you guys will get to experience that, and that makes for really cool pictures as well. And then, of course, the last thing for tonight will be the Afterglow Fireworks Show. And this really is one of the grandest fireworks shows that you will ever see. It runs in the air. It runs on the ground. It's well over 20 minutes. And the entire night is just one massive spectacle that makes for amazing pictures and really great memories for the trip, too. By the time you get back to the hotel, it'll probably be about um, 9 o'clock. It's pretty late night. So, um, so yeah, the next day... Um, uh, after breakfast, you guys get to start off day three, one of two ways. One half of the group will get to go on an adventurous Jeep tour, while the other half of the group will get to soak in the views of the Sandia Peak Tram. And then in the afternoon, we're going to flip-flop the group, and so everybody gets to experience everything for the whole day. So to start off with, we'll talk about this Jeep tour first. So in my opinion, this Jeep tour is an absolute blast. Um, we actually get to ride through a private ranch right through the middle of central New Mexico there, and it really is kind of organized as a journey through time and history. So you guys will get to see petrified sea, fo sea life fossils in an area that's now 6,000 feet above sea level. So obviously it shows that it used to all be underwater. Um, you also get to see ruins and petroglyphs. There's pottery, arrowheads, stone tools, um, irrigation walls as well, all from the Puebloan people from about 1,000 years ago. Uh, and then lastly, you'll get to see the remains of Spanish towns that were eventually taken over by the Navajo. So those can be some ghost towns. You'll see in the picture on the left hand there, it's kind of some remains that are left over. And it really is cool, like I said, it's just kind of a ride through history. So during your entire Jeep tour, though, you're also going to be experiencing some absolutely breathtaking beauty of, you know, th that the Southwest is really known for. So in a nutshell, the tour kind of consists of driving the Jeeps on trails from one site to another. At each site, you can exit the vehicles and join the guide on short walks for to kind of fully enjoy the tour. Walking is not required, though. Um, snacks and water are provided, as well as portable restrooms. It is about a two-and-a-half to three-hour tour, so we are, are with them for quite a while. So after each group is finished with their morning tour, we'll all meet at Gruet Winery. Uh, which is ranked as one of the best wineries in all of New Mexico. Um, with Albuquerque having very dry, uh, sandy soils and very high elevations, it really kind of creates that perfect combination to make some of the country's best sparkling wines. Um, if you want to go to the next slide there, Denise, it shows a, just a few pictures of, um, of the winery there. I'll let you get to that before I go on here. Oh, you're on mute, Denise. I don't know if you can. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go to the, the next slide here? Or is it sure, giving you trouble? There you go. There you go. No, you're good. There you go. Um, so yeah, I mean, when we arrive there, you'll, you'll have an included tasting ready to go for you. Um, that's like I said, already included and really, um, the sparkling wine is what they're really known for, but they have non-sparkling as well as just kind of your normal wines as well. But I mean, the sparkling wine is, is amazing. Um, so I highly suggest while you guys are enjoying your, your award-winning wine there, uh, I highly recommend that you guys walk the grounds, enjoy the mountain views. You'll have great views of Sandia Mountains over there. And uh, they also have a nice little small vineyard that you can walk through and just a really nice, relaxing atmosphere. I remember last time I was there, I just was thinking, you know, this just feels like vacation while we're here. It's just an amazing, amazing little winery, and they do a great job for us. So speaking of amazing views, let's go and talk about the Sandia Peak Tram. Um, so when we arrive, you'll notice there's massive lines when we get there. 
Um, however, once again, since we are showing up on our motor coach, they give us a little bit of uh, special treatment. We actually get to go straight to the front of the line. We do not wait at all, and they'll let us board the next tram uh, that's available for us. So once we board the tram, we'll start our, our way up to 10,378 feet in elevation. So we do get quite a ways up there. I highly suggest you guys drink lots of water on our way up there uh, or before it as well. But um, once you reach the top, there are two restaurants. There's lots of walking paths. There's this massive deck that you guys can kind of uh, walk around. It's multi-tiered. And in my opinion, they have the best views in all of the Southwest while we're up there. These pictures that I took, I mean, don't really do it justice. Um, they are, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful while you guys are up there. So, um, and really, you know, after being in the middle of the balloon fiesta the night before, the tram is really the perfect spot, spot to just kind of sit back and relax and, and kind of enjoy yourself. So the temperature up there can be a little chilly sometimes at the top, but most of the time, honestly, the sun is shining and it's just absolutely beautiful and tranquil up there. Um, like I said, make sure you bring your cameras or your camera phones because this will be some of the best pictures that you guys take on the entire tour. And uh, after everyone's amazing afternoon, the rest of the evening is really free for you guys to kind of uh, enjoy uptown on your own, uh, enjoy dinner on your own. And um, But I can tell you, do not stay out too late because our next morning will be our earliest morning of the entire tour. Ryan, which will, me. before yes, you go yes. on. Could you tell me how long we're at the top, at the peak? I mean, up, how long we'll be up there? Yeah. Yeah, it, it's really up to you guys, actually. So the tram, I, I think it's about every 30 minutes um, you can get on a tram. But you can go up and down as much as you want. Um, if it's a little too much for you up there and you don't want to walk around at the top, you can go up, take your pictures, and immediately head back down again. Um, we'll be at the at the tram area um, for probably a total of about two to two and a half hours because we had that Jeep tour happening um, at the other end. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So yeah, that will bring us to day four. So like I said, this will be our earliest start. We will have the bus rolling at 5 a.m., uh, which is early, but it is well worth it because we will go be going to the actual mass ascension. The mass ascension only happens a few times during the week of half, half event, and uh, we have it planned for us to be there. So the bus is rolling at 5 a.m. Um, when we get there, everybody will be able to eat breakfast at once again the Chasers Club. We included it once again for you guys. And you guys will, it'll be a private area. The heaters will be on. It is very cold in the morning. We are in high desert and we are there at five in the morning. So I would bring a full on coat um, and beanie and even gloves. <laughs> uh, it, it's worth it. So, um, so once you get there, you have a chance to eat breakfast, but I highly suggest quickly making your way out onto the field. Um, so that way you guys can see the Dawn Patrol take off. So the group known as the Dawn Patrol, if you've never heard of this group before, uh, it consists of about a dozen balloonists, and they're the ones that help the other balloonists get ready and get kind of an early idea of wind speeds and weather conditions and other things that might affect their flight before everybody starts going up. So after they take off, that's when my favorite part really takes over. You'll see flights of hundreds and hundreds of balloons start going off uh, with the mass ascension. You'll see balloons in all sizes and shapes, and as the mass ascension continues, it gets to the point where you truly see more balloons than you see sky. Um, it is absolutely breathtaking. You have the smells of the burners. It's a cold morning, but if you guys are out in the field, you'll feel the, the hot, warm burners burning right next to you. There's thousands of crew members getting these hundreds of balloons off the ground, and it really is just indescribable after, even after you've experienced it. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Many towns, many states have their own balloon fiestas, but you will soon see why Albuquerque is known not just the best in our country, but the best in the entire world by, by far. It really is. It's one of the coolest events I've ever been to. So we will spend quite a bit of time there. That's going to take up most of our morning. Um, next, we will head off to Acoma Pueblo Sky City. So many people say, and I have to agree with them, that this attraction is their favorite of the entire trip. So we'll start it off when we arrive there with a guided tour of Sky City to show, show off what is an actual historical site. There's amazing architecture all around us. There's really inspiring stories of the Acoma Pueblo tribe. And there's views over there that just go on for miles and miles because the city is built on top of this massive mesa. 
Um, the city is still inhabited by Acoma Pueblo people. Uh, some cool facts for you. The entire city is, um, by the tribe's rules, it is owned by all the women of the tribe. Um, while the men are responsible for taking care of the buildings using traditional methods to kind of keep everything authentic. So the women own it all, and the men have to work to keep it all looking right. Um, there's lots of cool stories. The story I always like to bring up is that picture on the left there where you see a door on the second level and a door on the lower level. So the door on the second level is actually the original door for that building because the uh, um, Acoma Pueblo people always have their front door on the second level. That's why you see the ladders everywhere. Well, when the Spaniards came to take them over, the Spaniards demanded that they build doors on the ground level so that way they could come in and check on them whenever they wanted to. So the Acoma Pueblo people were very small, very short, very skinny people. Spaniards were huge. You know, they're, they're built kind of like we are today, and they always wore a ton of armor. So the Puebloans built these doors. They made them very, very small. So that way the Spaniards could not go into their houses and actually check on them as much as they wanted to. They could only peek their head in, and they didn't even fit in there, especially with all of their armor on. So there's lots of good stories like that. And there's actually a couple spots that you're not allowed to take pictures of, so I can't show them to you here. But there's a beautiful church there and a cemetery that you're not allowed to take pictures of, but you will be able to walk through uh, when you uh, go on this tour here. Um, before we leave, there's also an award-winning museum uh, on site that you'll get to check out as well. We will have an included lunch for you as we get there. And by the time we leave, we won't get back to the hotel until probably about 3 or 4 p.m. And then once again, the rest of the evening is going to be free for you guys to kind of explore on your own. Honestly, when I was done with this day, I was pretty tired from waking up at 4 o'clock in the morning anyway. So a lot of people just take, the, take an easy dinner and kind of hit the hay a little bit early on this day. And that will lead us to day five, which is our last full day on this tour, sadly. So today we're actually going to be leaving Albuquerque, and we're going to head off on what's called the Turquoise Trail. The Turquoise Trail is called that for the mere fact that uh, there was a contest back in 1953 that was sponsored by the Albuquerque Chamber of Commerce uh, to name the scenic back road. And the, and the name they, or the reason they named it this is because you pass through the mining towns of Golden, Madrid, Madrid and uh, Sorelos, uh, all the way into Santa Fe. And all these mining towns were copper mining towns where uh, turquoise is typically found. So that's why it's now called the Turquoise Trail. So our first stop today is actually going to be in the very small town of Madrid. Excuse me. This town is a very quaint, very cute town. It's very artsy, so it's full of arts, lots of culture, and they have a lot of movie history as well. So one of the movies that I really like, I don't know if you have ever seen it before, is called Wild Hogs. It has John Travolta in it. Um, has Tim Allen in it, a few other good actors in it. Well, this is the town uh, where they had the cafe and they had the big standoff with the with the big bag biker gang right there, the picture to the left. So nowadays it's not a, a true cafe. It is kind of just a, a tchotchke gift area, but it's cool to take pictures next to it. And they have a lot of the, uh, the movies, artifacts, I guess you could say, that are, are there in the diner. There's also really cool kind of quirky areas as well called uh, one area in particular is called Connie's Photo Park. Um, so a lady by the name of Connie May who um, basically filled her entire yard with old style stick your head in the hole photo ops. And it's really quirky. You stick your head in the hole and they ha she has all sorts from there for you to do. Um, she just runs up donations so you can you know, give her a buck or whatever that may look like for you. Uh, and just there's all sorts of little quirky areas like that there in Madrid. So after our short time there, we'll probably only spend about a half hour to 45 minutes in Madrid. Uh, it's a good rest stop for you as well. We'll continue on to um, you know, the oldest state capital in the United States, also known as the Royal City of the Holy Faith of St. Francis, better known to us as Santa Fe. So Santa Fe was founded all the way back in 1609, and the city offers us so many historic and scenic opportunities for us to enjoy. So your tour, uh, when we get here, we'll actually have a step on God join us. And your tour will be a combination of driving and walking to many of the famous sites that will include places like the historic Santa Fe Plaza with a view of the Palace of the Governors. Of course, we'll, we'll have uh, the spiral staircase at the Loretto Chapel that will be included in your guys' tour as well. Uh, you'll get a chance to see the miniature model of the Santa, uh, uh, sorry, the Saint Chapelle in Paris. Uh, and the oldest church in New Mexico, and just so much more. There's so much to see and do in Santa Fe. 
And Santa Fe is that town that you have to go to when you're in New Mexico because it has everything that you want to see when you're in New Mexico. They have a color, they actually have an ordinance where all buildings have to be a certain uh, shade of tan, essentially. They can't build their buildings too high. They have to be the certain adobe style. And it's just absolutely beautiful. I mean, there's, there's the Georgia O'Keeffe Museum there that you can enjoy. We'll give you guys plenty of free time to enjoy the, the many restaurants and museums and shops that they have there. I highly suggest that you guys take a stroll through the Indian Market. It's right there downtown. That's the picture to the bottom right. Every morning uh, before 8 a.m., uh, they actually hand choose the people that are allowed to sell their product there. And you can't just sell anything. It has to be very high quality, and it has to be sold for a good price, and it has to be very reputable artists that sell there. They hand choose those every single morning. So I bought my wife some nice jewelry when I was there. It's very reasonable, nice turquoise pieces there as well. So I highly suggest you take a, uh, a chance uh, to, to check that spot out as well. So we'll spend basically most of our day there in Santa Fe before eventually heading back to Albuquerque. And our last stop for the tour is going to be the beautiful Turquoise Museum. So when, when people think of New Mexico, typically one of the things that they think of is turquoise. If you want to go to the next slide there, Denise. Um, you know, turquoise is very abundant throughout Native American and Spanish American jewelry. And um, throughout your, your private tour here, um, it's, it's a five-generation family-owned and run museum. And you'll be able to, once you're there in person, you're going to see how beautiful it is there. They have stuff such as turquoise gems. That picture on the right and the top picture there, that's a 30-foot, 200-pound, 21,000-piece chandelier. Um, they have breathtaking jewelry that actually belong to royalty all over the world. Um, and throughout the building, I mean, there's grand halls, there's a spiral staircase, there's a really nice, beautiful outside area with kind of a, a Greek uh, mythology feel with waterfalls and a pool out there. And this entire museum for during our entire stay here is completely private for only Denise's group. No other public will be there. No other Western Leisure Tours are going to be there. This is just for Grand View Tours. So you get a private tour of the museum. And then following our private tour, we will have a private farewell dinner for you guys underneath the stars um, in their outside area surrounding the pool. The alcohol that will be there uh, for purchase for you guys will be all New Mexico, be New Mexico wine, beer, and spirits. And the food that will be served to you will be all Greek and fire dishes with amazing dessert to kind of finish the night off. So it's not just Mexican food the whole time, I promise. Uh, we'll have a delicious Greek um, dinner for you guys uh, to end off our tour. And I think I have a picture of that in the next slide, Denise. Go ahead and go one more. There it is. Yeah. So we're going to have two long tables on both sides of the pool. You can see it's very Greek out there, uh, kind of Roman Greek, I guess you could call it. And um, they have lights that will surround our entire uh, group out there. And it's just going to be absolutely beautiful. Even if it's a little bit windy, they have very tall brick walls. So it won't be windy where we're eating dinner. And um, yeah, they, they have a pretty special night planned for our group when we get there. And that will be the way that we end our tour. So that will bring us to day six. Day six, I'll let Denise talk about an Alcar option that we have for you guys um, that, that um, you know, can fit into your itinerary if you'd like it to. Otherwise, we do have included transfers that will take you back to, back to the Albuquerque airport to begin your journey back home. So some of the main highlights for this trip, I'll go through that real quick, Denise, if you want to go to one more slide here. Some of the main highlights for this trip um, uh, is going to be the Indian Public Cultural Center, of course. You have plenty of time in Old Town, Albuquerque. You get access to the Chasers Club at both events for the Albuquerque Balloon Fiesta, which is going to be the Afterglow and the Mass Ascension. Of course, on day three, you have the Jeep Tour, the Wine Tasting, and Sandia Peak Tram, all included as well. We get time at Sky City in the Acoma Pueblo Museum. You get to see the Turquoise Trail with a stop in Madrid. Of course, we get that full day in Santa Fe and then that amazing private experience at the Turquoise Museum. So lots included, lots to do, and tons of meals included with this one as well. So I'll let Denise go into more detail from here on uh, all, the, all the things that she has included for this tour for you guys. Okay, Ryan, thanks very much. That was, that was a wonderful presentation and uh, just really touched on some of the wonderful things that we're going to be seeing. So thank you. And 
that's one of the reasons why uh, we love working with you is uh, out at Western Leisure, you really make the, the tours and the programs very special and unique for our clients. And uh, we appreciate that and all the special touches. So the included features, of course, that uh, Brian, Ryan just went through, you, you got to see some of the things that are all of the things that are planned. But then just on the, um, the nuts and bolts side of things, of course, you know that we always take you to and from the airport, airport from here in Delaware in the Sussex County area. Uh, we will be providing the round trip airfare, including all of the taxes and fees that will be with Southwest Airlines. We have our five nights first class accommodations at the Hyatt Place in Uptown and we'll be using transportation on a full-size motor coach. During our tour, we will have the services of a professional tour director. Ryan also mentioned when we're in Santa Fe, we'll have a local guide. And then you see that each morning we have our four breakfast. We've included one lunch and three dinners. And then there is our wine tasting, all of the entrance fees that would need to be included and tips for those meals that are included. And your luggage handling, of course, is always included with one suitcase per person. Uh, those of you already booked know the price is $28.95. That is per person, double occupancy, includes your airfare as well. And um, let's see, there was a, I had a thought right before my little pup barked in my ear, but um, wanted to make sure that you know that uh, the only things that are not included would be those, you know, private and personal tips that you would give to your bus driver and to the professional tour director that would be with you during your time. So uh, I think we've covered quite a bit. Now, how about on your side? Are there any questions, any things that you would like to ask uh, Ryan or myself? Any questions as far as um, yeah. what you might yeah. go ahead? Yep, John. Uh, uh, Denise, just a few. Um, average temperature in October. Average temperature in October out there. Okay. Yeah, yes. I can take I can take that one. Um, okay, right. So the mornings are cold. The mornings will be probably below thirty-two degrees um, every okay. single morning. All right. In the afternoons, you're wearing a t-shirt and shorts. It changes completely. Um, as the day progresses. So how I typically suggest people dress is um, wear pants and um, bring a coat and a light jacket for every day, truly. Got it. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as COVID and masking out that way, um, still as it is around here? Masking? Um, I'm not too, I'm not yeah, I'm not too sure how it is out there, to be honest with you. Um, we, we specialize in the West, so I'm a little clueless when it comes to the East. But um, I can tell you right now there is mask mandates there, but pretty much everything is open. Basically, you're walking around with a mask. Once you sit down, you can take the mask off, and things kind of go back to normal once you're seating or once you're right. seated. Okay. They're expecting by the time October rolls around for everything to be completely normal, though. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, let me see here. Um, do you have, Ryan, will you send us a list or maybe uh, Denise of those restaurants that you will recommend in the towns that we will be on our own for meals? Yes. Uh, John, what will be provided for you is yes, we can definitely provide a list of those things in the area. But also we have a Grandview Tour app that's customized to your destination for that particular tour. So you'll have a variety of not just restaurants, but other things right there within the area. It's just a fantastic little app loaded with all types of things that will be so useful for your tour, including your itinerary, if you use it. If not, we can always prove sure, sure. But uh, we'll have that as well as your itinerary, flight information. Everything will be convenient in your smartphone if you use one. And then if you don't, of course, we will make sure that you have everything in a hard copy as well. Of course. 
Um, so, John, um, to add in there as well, when we pull up, for example, to Old Town Albuquerque, we will provide you uh, with kind of a cartoony, I guess, but map of Old Town. And it will have on there the shops that are there, the restaurants are there, and it'll basically have you are here and you can decide how you'd like to progress your way through Old Town. Same thing for Santa Fe. Sure. Okay. That's great. Um, Do you need reservations for any of those or um, since there's going to be so many people in the area? Typically, there's about a 25 minute wait, but you guys will have plenty of time there that that won't be an issue. So typically what we see a lot of people do is like the second they get off the coach, they'll head straight to a hotel, get the reservations, then go do whatever they want to do. Okay. Now, also, um, and like everybody who's been on these trips, you know, for our tour guide, the bus driver, uh, are you going to recommend a certain level of gratuity? So that what the norm would be? Yes, well, we'll put that in your final documents as okay. far as what's a, a typical standard. And then, of course, it's up to you. Of yep. course. We'll give you some guidelines. Okay, that's fine. Good. We're good. Hey, thanks. You're good? Okay, yeah. great. So, Laura, you... any questions? Frank? Yep. Um, what is the general elevation of Albuquerque? Is that like 5,000 <laughs> feet? Yeah, exactly right. Yep. And how, right about, around 5, how about Santa Fe? It's a little bit lower. Typically, it's a little bit of a warmer climate over there. But yeah, I mean, you'll, you'll see, um, minus the, the Sandia mountain range, New Mexico is pretty flat. I mean, there's not a lot of change of elevation. It's not like you're in Wyoming or, or Utah or something like that. New Mexico is pretty even kill all the way across till you get real south. Or real north too, like Taos is, is really high. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Ryan, did you mention something about an add on or an additional something? Oh, yes. Thanks, Laura. I did. <laughs> Some people have asked about is it possible if they want to take a balloon ride, um, you know, um, on their own to go up into one of the hot air balloons? And the answer is yes, and we would be able to arrange that for you on our day of departure. We would do it in the morning, and uh, we would take you to over to where you would meet your guide, and you would do your balloon ride. And that's uh, that's just an option. We get a lot of uh, interest in it, and some people want to do it, and some don't. And the cost of that is one sixty nine per person to do a balloon ride. 169 per person. And that's What's something that, that you can 30 minute ride. About how long is that, Ryan? No, the event total takes actually about three hours. Um, you'll arrive at seven in the morning and you won't get done till about 10, 10 30. If you booked a flight that takes off at noon, you'd be able to make that just fine. Yeah. And so that would work with our flights. Mm -hmm. okay. So we, okay. we plan on taking off. Um, yeah, it's flying out about uh, two in the afternoon. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. And that'll be nonstop back to BWI. Okay. 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 Great. Anything else? Anything else? So when, when, like, obviously we'd have to make, when would we make our reservation for the balloon ride? Once we signed up or at some other yeah. point? Or? If you can make your reservations by uh, August with Denise, right. um, Right. Is that right, Denise? Is that cool if they book it with you? Yeah, I think so. Unless okay. you think they, in, unless they think they need to do it sooner, and you already know you want to do it. So yeah, August is, August is like waiting. That. August is waiting to the last minute, but you should be fine oh. as far as getting space for it. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, then I, I would say if you think you want to do it, do it as soon as you you know you do, and no later than Definitely. August. <laughs> yeah. Now, in your experience. Um, in my experience, ballooning is weather dependent. Are they, do they often have weather where they can't ascend or can't um, fly? That is, that is the, uh, the biggest question for Balloon Fiesta. You hit the nail on the head, Laura. <laughs> yeah. You really did, yeah. So, I mean, we have had times where, you know, the weather comes up and we can't enjoy the afterglow or we can't enjoy the morning ascension. Or if you book a, a balloon flight, if the weather's bad, they can't right. do it. If it's too windy, it's unsafe. Mm -hmm. Why right. Albuquerque is such a great place for ballooning, what makes it different than the rest of the world, really, 
is there's somehow a, a cyclical flow, essentially, that brings them uh, in a timely manner all the way around this certain flight around Albuquerque. It's a very easy p place to balloon, but that goes away if it gets too windy over there. Okay. <clears throat> so it is still weather dependent. Very. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And, and I can tell you too, um, what we've done in the past, you know, if, let's just say you guys missed the afterglow event or something like that. Um, we could decide as a group, truly last minute, if we want to skip something else and try to make the afterglow event a different night that we're there. You guys are going on the back half of the event, which is the better half, um, because the afterglow, the mass ascension, all that happens almost every day on the back end. We're on the front end, it only happens one or two days. And then the okay. whole week, not, none of it happens. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Great sure. question. And just, and just as a side note, um, Steve and I have done um, Yellowstone and Jackson Hole in the winter uh, with a different company, with Road Scholar. Oh. It's fabulous. It's just oh. fabulous. <laughs> oh, thanks for thanks for mentioning that. Yeah. So I I, th 